So good morning, everyone. Um, it's the last day of the conference. Thanks for coming to this session. Um, I hope you're all feeling well. Today we'll talk about um, the ISO 18974 and if the existing ISO 5230 is a stepping stone for this implementation. Your speakers today is myself and my lovely colleague Katharina uh, Grauf. Um, we are from PwC Germany, and um, you might know PwC um, as an auditing and consulting firm, but we also have a very strong practice in open source software management, compliance and security management, and also we are certifiers for the ISO, and that's why we are um, very knowledgeable about this um, 18974 ISO. So we first want to start a little bit um, looking back to the 5230 um, and about its success story, and then introduce you to the I, um, 18974 about open source security management, and then we'll talk about the synergies between those two ISOs, and um, we'll also give you some information about a an, um, standardized um, certification process. So um, when ISO 5230 came out in end of 2020, um, of course, many people and companies ask, okay, is it just another compliance overhead? Is it just another burden or does it actually help? And um, looking here to the crowd, <laughs> how many um, people know about 5230? Okay. And have you already implemented 5230? Just raise your hand. Ki kind of? Yes, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can talk about this later then. <laughs> um, so, I mean, first of all, the ISO 5030 itself is a success because it's an international standard for open source compliance management. Um, and being an ISO, it of course um, is very well known, it's very well regarded, and this itself is a success for a former industry standard which was created by a large um, group of people with, um, with the Open Chain project um, from the Linux Foundation, and actually turning it or moving it to an um, international standard is a success um, for itself. Um, also, it's um, very good because it defines the um, why and what, but it doesn't define the how. And therefore, it's very adaptable um, through all organizations in all industries, all company sizes, and so on. That's very important um, for its adaption. We also see an um, adaption of 50 to 30 um, in the companies. I mean, not shown here with, uh, within this crowd, but. Um, we can show you some figures later on. Um, we see that the adaption is rising. And um, through its adaption, um, you reduce risks in the supply chain because you bring transparency into the used um, open source components and you transfer this into the supply chain and you make this transparent. And therefore, um, I mean, that's the whole purpose of this ISO. It reduces risks in the supply chain. And thus, uh, and thus it builds trust in, um, in software supply chains. So here looking at some figures, um, I mean, this is a sneak preview of an official um, Bitcom monitor open source study in Germany, which will come out only next week. So, but this is a sneak preview here, two numbers already, so from, um, 2021 to 2023, so the newest number. Um, the companies in Germany who have policies for open source software management increased from 17 to 32 percent. And um, this is also part of um, success from the 50 to 30 because it's an official standard and people start uh, managing open source rigor rigorously. And also here another number, 41% uh, of companies in Germany have established open source compliance processes um, and um, based on 50 to 30. And when we then look at the open chain project, 
Uh, more than 100 companies have officially announced open source 50 to 30 compliance um, through self-certification. And it's large companies all over the world which are um, self-certified, um, which is very important for the adoption of the standard. And I mean, the official title of C50 to 30 is Open Source License Compliance Standard. So it's about um, license compliance, but it's actually more than just license compliance. Um, it guides companies who so far don't have an OSPEL, so who don't have any open source um, um, program management so far. It guides them to first implement processes for skills, for um, policies, for tooling, um, for everything you need to manage open source. And also companies who already manage open source um, and have already established uh, measures for open source management have a very good orientation to standardize it throughout the companies, throughout the organization, if, if particularly if it's larger organizations, former they might have had um, different practices throughout different entities, but now they have an official standard and say, okay, this is the way to go. We, we do it like um, it's defined in 50 to 30. And for companies who already manage open source um, very maturely, they have now the chance to get self-certified to prove conformance um, with good open source license compliance management. They can do this through a self-certification or through a third-party certifier. So, um, and as I said, it's not only about license compliance actually, because um, when you start implementing 50 to 30, it also um, brings you to the point where you will define somehow a strategy for open source software management in your company, which is very important. And um, you can better realize open source advantages when you have a defined process that everyone follows in your company. And also it actually um, introduced in the standard um, the need for, the f for an SBOM and uh, that's defined, which is important for compliance, but not only for compliance, um, but particularly also for security aspects. And that's, wh that's why I want to hand over to my colleague um, to introduce you to the 18974. Um, Great, thank you, Marcel. Um, yeah, let's look deeper into the new ISO for open source security. As we all know, um, open source security is a topic of major importance, and um, there were several keynotes this week, talks um, on, on major um, incidents uh, in the open source ecosystem, so yeah, I will not read them all out again. I think we all know those um, yeah, cases of, of the last years. Um, but what they all have in common is that they were affecting the software supply chain and making use of the increasing complexity in the software supply chain. And what is even more surprising here is that, especially with uh, regards to Log4J, Log4J, um, that some of those um, security gaps, some of those vulnerabilities are still um, yeah, of, of importance because um, downloads, for example, of Log4J are still, um, in some cases, vulnerable versions. So um, we can see that um, some organizations are still not capable to manage open source security properly. Um, and yeah, here comes the, the new ISO in place. Um, but what we have to, to mention here, and what is very important, we shouldn't consider open source less secure than um, proprietary closed software, because a closed software is in most cases including open source anyway. So what we should really focus here is to manage the open source properly to, um, to address those um, security risks. And the good thing is that um, the governments and regulators are um, yeah, seeing this, this risk and the uh, necessity to, to manage open source properly. Um, also those examples mentioned here like the um, Cyber Resilience Act or DORA for, for the financial sector um, have been or, yeah, major topic um, this week. Um, we all know the discussion around the Cyber Resilience Act, but um, in general, I think it's a good thing that um, the current regulations are addressing the necessity of open source management. 
but what is necessary for, for those um, professional measures. Um, I think it's two things. Um, it's transparency and the need for standardization. And this is exactly what um, the new ISO is, is offering, um, standardization in open source management measures. And um, it's giving us the, the ability to um, address security um, incidents um, in a professional manner. So, um, what is the new ISO 18974? Um, as Marcel already mentioned, um, it's a sister standard to open chain uh, 5230 um, on, on license compliance and transfers this um, already existing ISO in, in the security domain. So, um, it provides um, a standardized guide for open source security um, assurance programs, how they um, should, should um, so what they should um, compromise and um, why it is necessary to, um, to manage the um, yeah, open source um, security aspects. And as Marcel already mentioned, the um, intention behind this program is to describe the what and why, but not the how um, of, of implementation. So um, the program allows for um, very high flexibility in, in adoption and in uh, implementation which makes it so useful for different kinds of organizations. So how does it look like? Um, here on this slide, we have um, all important chapters um, in this ISO norm, um, beginning on, on the upper right corner with the program foundation, going on with um, the definition of relevant tasks and um, support which is needed in the organization, and then um, furthermore with um, the content review and approval chapter and lastly um, there are some requirements on adherence when it comes to um, certification of the um, open source security management system. So starting off with program foundation, um, some of you might already know um, those um, yeah, sub chapters um, as this is very similar to the um, 5230 certification. So um, it all starts with um, adequate policies and um, definition of competencies, which is always needed um, when it comes to implementation of a security management program. However, the program is only really effective um, when the awareness within the organization is existing. So this is another important pillar um, here in the program foundation. And of course, the scope has to be properly defined especially um, when it comes to parallel implementation with the 5230 uh, for open source license compliance. And lastly, in Program Foundation, we have um, measures for, for standard practices, meaning um, measures which uh, describe how to react to um, security incidents in the organization. So um, here I have also some, some details which are, right, uh, which are coming right from, from the document itself. And what is important here to understand is that the um, ISO certification um, explicitly focuses on the documentation of the measures. So it's not sufficient to have a process implemented. It also has to be properly documented and this documentation has to be accessible for everyone in the um, organization who is dealing with open source. This is why I have um, brought those excerpts here. Um, later on, as I said, um, it's important um, to define the relevant tasks in this program and to ensure that um, those measures, those processes, um, the personal is um, equipped um, with the um, yeah, sufficient resources on a financial and on a personal basis um, to ensure that the program yeah, is running properly. Um, yeah, also here, a um, short excerpt of um, what is written in, in the certification document. Um, as I said, for example, identified program roles have been properly staffed, adequate funding is allocated. Um, this chapter now, the content review and approval is the central part of um, the security ISO. As here it comes to the SBOM. The SBOM is a central element um, of, of this document because the SBOM um, makes us able to, to react um, on, on vulnerabilities. Um, as it ensures the, the transparency we all need. And lastly, at the upper left corner, um, as I said, we have some uh, specifications uh, when it comes to, to certification. Um, 
but uh, Marcel will delve into the certification details later on. So as you see, um, there are a lot of details on this slide, but don't worry, um, the ISO document itself is very, um, very compact. So I think it's around eight or nine um, pages. So um, it's a very yeah, compact guide on, on how to, to manage the open source security. Yeah, here we have um, very simple supply chain, nothing complex. Um, and it, as you can see, there is um, yeah, an IT solution, which is assembled step by step um, to a final product. But what all those have in common is a small, tiny security gap, breach whatsoever. It doesn't matter when, when, it, um, when it was implemented, but there is one. It's highlighted in red. <laughs> And um, as you can see, this the security gap is, is transferred along the whole software supply chain, which is, yeah, obviously very bad. Um, but imagine um, all those um, organizations in the supply chain have the ability to detect and to react to this security gap. And this is where um, the ISO yeah, steps in and makes us able to um, detect and react those, those breaches and which makes it also possible in the supply chain to work together. I think this is key when it comes to open source security that not only single organizations are, are adopting this standard, but it's a joint effort because every step in this um, software supply chain uh, needs to be secured by, by standard processes. So now um, the major question of, of our talk um, what are the synergies um, between the compliance ISO and the security ISO and can maybe the um, compliance ISO be a stepping stone towards the implementation of the security ISO? So um, what I have done here is a direct um, comparison of both um, ISOs and, and their contents. Um, so as I already pointed out for, for the security ISO um, on the right side, um, there's a program foundation and exactly this structure is also um, included in, in the compliance ISO. So also here we have um, policies, we have scoping which is necessary, competencies have to be defined, and also the awareness program is very important. So here um, we already have some, some synergies. Of course the, the content is, is differing, but um, the requirement and the measure and the framework is similar. So here um, yeah, we can harmonize um, the, the implementation and this also applies um, to the second chapter, um, which is relevant tasks defined and supported. <coughs> and when they all merge is um, in this chapter, open source content review and approval, because here both ISO norms point to one thing, and that's the S-form. So, um, yeah, when we come to, to adoption of um, ISO 4 license compliance or security, um, both require the um, ability to um, create professional S forms. But of course, the, um, the intention behind this is differing. So on the one side, um, compliance ISO, of course, um, points to um, the use of S forms for handling um, open source license use cases and compliance artifact creation. And on the other side, um, the security S form um, serves to handle um, the detection re resolution of vulnerabilities and to provide the um, necessary transparency in the supply chain. So yeah, as you can see, um, both have a very similar structure. Of course, this also comes from its origin um, as it was developed by, by OpenChain. But um, from my perspective, it makes it very comprehensive and very easy to, to understand um, how, how the new ISO is, is working. So, can the 5230 be a stepping stone towards security? I would say yes, but it depends. I think this is a yeah, consulting answer. Um, but yeah, it always depends on what your um, organization is um, focusing on, what the goals are, and whether there are already ex existing frameworks um, where the ISO should be um, adjusted to. Um, but as we have seen, the S form is, is the crucial element, the, the binding factor between both ISO norms, and therefore it definitely makes sense to harmonize um, processes and efforts here. 
in order to um, yeah, ensure a, a professional and robust um, airspawn. And what is also great here, um, due to the synergies, um, yeah, it's, it's not necessary to answer um, the question which ISO to implement first, because um, all scenarios work. So um, if there is an organization which has already adopted um, the ISO for license compliance, um, security ISO can be implemented as well and vice versa. And of course, both can be implemented in parallel as we have seen um, that the framework and the requirements, especially in program foundation, are very similar. So now let's have a look at the certification details. <coughs> okay. So yes, lastly, we want to talk about a certification process and just give you um, a little bit of an insight how, how it works. Um, perhaps this thought up front, um, does it make sense to certify? And you can see here uh, on the one side um, the effort which is required to run an open source program, to run an open source um, security program. Um, and then again, the effort which is required to do in certification. On the other hand, you see um, how much trust does it build in your supply chain. So just running and operating an um, open source software security program doesn't provide you with so much trust in your supply chain because no one knows, do, do you do it correctly? How is it done? Um, and so on. So therefore, a self-certification or a third-party certification builds, of course, much more trust. And that's what ISOs and certifications are for. Um, and this is just a general thought to to this to show to your um, to your uh, partners to show within your supply chain that you're doing this correctly that's what an ISO and certification is for then very often there's a question about what are the benefits for a supplier and for a company who engage with those suppliers that are certified First of all, I mean, if you're adopting the ISO 5230 or 8974, you can demonstrate um, and you can prove that you're compliant and that you can show, cast, show, show it to your customers. But it's also a seal of quality internally and um, a reward for your efforts that you've set up the program correctly, that you have some, um, someone externally um, looking at it and providing feedback um, and you can also benefit from this valuable feedback to further optimize it. Also, it might bring a benefit for uh, in IFPs because uh, some IFPs nowadays request companies um, to be certified or it's, uh, in some cases um, companies now also start to put, put it into the standard procurement uh, documents that um, certification is required. Um, one other and perhaps last aspect is um, that you also can overcome um, operational blindness because sometimes you work on your program for quite a while and you have many people engaged within your company uh, but you don't see the obvious because you don't have this external view who looks at it with a fresh view. So this is all beneficial for the company who actually um, starts an, impl an implementation certification process and for the other side uh, in, this, um, in the supply chain, um, it also brings benefits, of course, to engage with clients uh, or with, with, cust uh, with uh, suppliers that are um, certified because it can reduce your internal efforts. I mean, there's an, or yeah, I mean, depending on how you set up your processes, but it makes sense to set up a process that when you receive trust and a certification from a supplier regarding their open source compliance and security management, that you can reduce the internal office in terms of double checking, in terms of um, scrutinizing um, and checking what you get delivered from them. Also, it's um, helpful to um, apply this uh, state of the art um, standard um, throughout your suppliers so that you don't measure suppliers um, with always with, diff with a different standard, with a different um, way of um, checking their compliance and their security in open source, 
it makes sense to do this the same way um, for the whole supplier base. And um, this comes to the point of an unbiased assessment. So sometimes when you have different teams who are engaged with the supplier for quite a long time already, they know them very well. And then on the other hand, you, they then have to check on a supplier that they don't know so well. Um, there might be some bias uh, in terms of assessing the program of the supplier and checking if they um, um, follow open source compliance and security rules uh, correctly. So um, it makes sense to, to trust on a certification, which is an official um, feedback and um, assessment of such um, open source security measures. I mean, the content of the certification is quite clear. Katarina already showed you. I mean, that's of course the content which is um, written in the um, in the standard, the program foundation, um, the defined tasks, the content approval, um, and the adherence to the whole program overall. And um, when it comes to an actual certification, there are different techniques to do a certification and to do the audit. Um, it starts with interviews, which is just discussing um, the content and the scope and um, all the relevant parts. And then for particular parts um, of the program, there will be a review of documentation and records uh, so that actually the content, the, the availability and also the content of these documents which are required, the verification materials is checked. And then for the most important part, um, what I think for the heart of this whole um, security program, so for the SPOM, SPOM creation, um, the curation and the uh, completeness and correctness of the SPOM, um, there is, uh, it's, it makes sense to have an observation of the whole press process and to do a process walkthrough to really understand and double check um, that the SBOM is um, created correctly and completely. So these are the audit techniques. Um, and then there's, um, of course, random target sampling. So um, based on the ver verification material, which are defined in the ISO, um, there might be some spot checks, uh, random or targeted sampling um, to double check these materials. Just a brief um, overview of an official certification process. Um, I mean, it, it wouldn't be a process if there's not an ISO standard for it. So there's a 17021 um, standard from the ISO for certification of management systems. Um, and since an open source compliance and open source security um, system is, is a management system, um, this ISO standard for certifying management systems um, is used. And it's very clearly defined what needs to be done. And it's from um, pre-certification pre acti activity. So it's actually just um, defining a timeline and so on. And, um, it then actually comes to the audit planning. Um, the objectives and the scope and the criteria needs to be ma made very clear. And um, very often we have a discussion about the scope. Um, because um, it's not so easy to define the scope of a certification. Will the whole company, will just a particular business unit, will just a particular um, organization, a country, an entity will be certified? So that's very important um, to think about. And also when you trust on certifications from your suppliers, you should make sure that um, the actually um, the actual development department you you get your products from is certified and not some other entity or some other business unit is certified. So um, this is very important because sometimes there's a misunderstanding whatever entity A in, in Germany is certified and you procure products from company B in the organization from France. So then that's not so helpful, of course. Then the actual certification process um, is quite clear. It, there's a phase one, which is a documentation review. So um, that all documents are provided available and um, the content is correct. Um, and then phase two is the effectiveness review. And that's where the, um, the walkthroughs and the review of processes comes in. 
um, where the actual effectiveness that these things which are uh, documented and which are defined in processes are also lived throughout the organization or throughout this certifi certification scope um, is in place and is working correctly. And um, once this is done, um, there might be some non-conformities where an auditor says, okay, here's some stuff which needs to be um, reworked. And if this is not too critical and not too much, um, there's um, a period of time which is then defined by an auditor um, to, to rework this and um, then it can be rechecked um, in this whole process. And once everything is uh, checked and correctly, um, a decision for a, a certification is then granted. And one last thing to mention is then I mean, we, we now talked about the certification process to up where you receive a, certif a certificate, but then also important that's the whole thing about ISOs and standards, uh, ISO standards and certifications is that this needs to be maintained. So because um, the certification looks at the process in a company at a particular uh, point in time. And to make sure that three months later, six months later, one year later, this is still correct and they are still following the processes. Um, um, an auditor does um, yeah, maintaining of certification, <laughs> it's called. So um, there's an agreement between the auditor, the certifier, and the um, company that regularly they check in and ask, okay, is still everything running? Did you do any bigger changes? Have you whatever, um, have a complete new process, a new scope, um, a new um, tooling, and so on? Because then a re-audit needs to be done. But if in this check-in um, it's agreed that everything stays the same, everything is correct, um, still works as it was um, seen, um, the certificate just um, stays um, as it is. After one year then, a recertification, a civilian's audit is done, um, and then it's recertified. And after three years actually, um, a full scope um, certification and reassessment is performed. So, um, to conclude, it's a new ISO out there, not yet, to be honest. Um, it's still draft international standard. Just this morning, we were talking with Shane in the um, open chain meeting, um, which runs parallel. Um, we are still waiting for the official release of this ISO, but um, the whole process has uh, gone through, and it's just um, a matter of time until um, uh, the ISO actually releases this um, new standard, um, but it's all done, completed, and we are just waiting for an announcement and, um, until it's officially out there. Um, so the resilience in IT systems, we see it everywhere, and particularly also in regulations which are coming up in Europe and in um, other jurisdictions. The resilience in IT systems is very important. It's increasingly important. And since open source is built uh, in, in, into all IT systems, open source security is important. That's where the standard comes in. Yeah? Um, we discussed if um, the 5230 can be a stepping stone. And um, yes, it can. If you have already 5230 uh, implemented, you have um, very, good, um, uh, very good foundation material and very good processes um, around the SBOM creation al already. So this is very helpful. But um, because we've received this question several times, I just want to mention again, um, it's not a necessity to have 50 to 30 in place first. So um, both can be done individually. It's two separate standards, um, and both can be um, applied individually. Supply chain security is a joint effort. It doesn't make sense when only one company um, cares about um, security in the whole process uh, and cannot rely on others and so on. It's a joint effort. Everyone needs to join in. And um, so hopefully the adoption of this um, standard will work very quickly and um, many companies will take care and um, will also showcase to other companies through self-certification or external certification um, that they are compliant with it and that they take care. And um, then lastly, and quite important um, is that also, I mean, when this standard is applied correctly, um, there's also a contribution back to the open source ecosystem in terms of 
um, identification of new um, vulnerabilities, which are then um, mentioned and f fed back into the ecosystem. And also, I mean, since um, uh, CVs are known and are communicated in the ecosystem, um, a joint uh, effort to, to work around them or to actually solve them um, is also very helpful for the overall security in the ecosystem. So this is it. Um, please go ahead with questions or talk to us anytime. The thing I don't understand is um, with this um, uh, um, certification of uh, security, um, uh, you're building a with a you're building a chain of trust. But the thing is, um, how ca could possibly um, open source projects like be part of that? Because an open source project is not a company. They cannot buy the ISO standards, probably. I mean, when they're company back, yes, but when it's a small project, they're not. And it's a bit against what I feel is the open source spirit. Because th there is an end to this chain. And the end of the chain is not the end of the supply chain or the beginning of the supply chain. Mm -hmm. So basically, your question or your comment is if open source project can also be certified or how they can yeah. be part of this whole process. I mean, it, it's a good question and it's absolutely correct what you're saying in my, I mean, the certification is for an organization. I mean, it's not defined if a project could be an organization. I mean, um, this is something that could be discussed. And um, the question is if a um, open chain project with, which is maintained in a community, if they can also apply the standard and can also say, okay, they have uh, measurements in place um, to fulfill these security, um, <coughs> the security audit uh, standard. But um, first of all, you're correct. I mean, it's the certification is uh, rather defined for organizations. Um, but I'm just thinking, I mean, uh, I think also it does help projects because there is a feedback to the community, to the project, if um, something is identified through companies. And the more companies care about um, CVEs and, and vulnerabilities in projects and feed it back to the community, um, I mean, the, the more the project can also benefit of it. Yeah, maybe so, yeah. maybe to, to jump in here. Um, the interaction with the open source ecosystem and, and the community is an um, essential part of both um, ISO norms. So um, especially the um, 5230 um, has a separate chapter on um, contributions and, and the interaction with the ecosystem. And um, so does the security ISO because um, when an organization is um, adopting those, those measures, those requirements, it becomes able to better interact um, with the community and to, to provide them um, also contact points to um, to communicate uh, with each other. So, um, yeah, as Marcel said, um, there is um, the, the, the connection between the organization and the community in short. Yeah, similar question, basically. So do you see realistic efforts to really or effort starting to certify the whole supply chain for like large uh, companies. Um, is that it's not mandatory as far as I understand from the standard, right? It's not mandatory to have all suppliers certified and so on, right? No, I mean um, the, the standard is for one company at a time. Yeah. So the certification is not about saying that a company has certified the whole supply chain. So the certification is for one entity, for one organization. Um, I mean, if a company only will engage with suppliers which are certified, that's up for discussion. That's up for the procurement and risk management and so on of this company. And what we see with 5230 and now in discussions with 8974 is that larger organizations um, come up with a risk-based approach. 
So it's to define what are, my, my, what are the most critical suppliers, um, what risk do I have from these suppliers, where does um, the code or the components go into my product, um, how critical are these products for, for, for my company, and if this is critical, you rather will trust a supplier which is certified or which has particular measures in place and can uh, showcast them to you. And if um, it's not critical at all, you probably you don't care about if your supplier is um, <coughs> certified or not. So, but there's not a requirement. Um, I mean, if we, uh, or if we certify one company, it's not a requirement that their whole supplier base is certified. I mean, it cannot be the case that the whole supplier base is certified because as um, my question all earlier, um, I wanted to like, start the dis discussion that um, suppliers can be open source projects. So, and they cannot be certified because uh, it's, I think this is a part of where ISO is falling short and not working for this. But this is my personal opinion about ISO, but yeah, this is why it, it feels a bit like um, standing in a ruin and uh, cleaning the floor with a with with, with a, um, a vacuum cleaner. I mean, you're doing it right, but the house is broken, probably. Yeah, but I think it's an important first step. Yeah, yeah, sure, <laughs> but, no, but of, yeah. of course it, it, it cannot cannot solve the, the whole problem of, of, of security in the open source ecosystem. But um, as I said, it's an important um, connection point between organizations and projects to ensure that there is a joint effort in, in open source security. Yeah. Thank you. And I will take, um, or we will take your... <laughs> oh, okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>